Hi, I'm Jeff Mackerlane, and welcome to my latest installment of Tighten Up Your Blues. And this week, we're going to talk about turnarounds. And this is what I like to call the turnaround factory. And what we're going to do is look at turnarounds and how we can get a turnaround anywhere on the neck, in any key, in any time, in any place. It takes a little bit of work, but it, the payoff is great. It really opened up the idea of turnarounds to me. So let's talk about a turnaround. A turnaround is generally the last two bars of a blues. So a traditional kind of turnaround, which... Right? So that actually incorporates the idea that I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so turnarounds are great because they are the, you can use them as a beginning of a tune or you can use them as an ending of a tune. Okay, so here's the idea. Let's talk about E because we play E blues a lot and it just works out great for the guitar. E7 is spelled E, G sharp, B, and D. And what we're going to do is focus in on the top three strings today. Now, what we're going to do is go through inversions of an E7 chord. And all that means is E7 is E, G sharp, B, and D. I'm going to play three notes of that chord, and I'm going to try to go in each position. I'm going to play three notes of the four-note chord. So let me show you what I mean. Here I'm going to start off down low. G sharp, E, sorry, G sharp, B, and E. That's part of E7, right? It's just E triad. Now the next voicing I could get would be G sharp, D, and E, right? So I still have three of the four notes. If I continue through with this, I want to go to the next note in the scale that's kind of fingerable without doubling a note. My G sharp could move up to my B, have that same D, and I have E open. So I have B, D, and E. So continue with that idea, I can go up to G sharp here. Regular old E7 chord, right? So, so far we have E7. Now the next one would just be regular E triad. Now the next thing we could do is move this B up to the D and we'd get this, which is a great E7 voicing, right? Okay, now the next thing we can come up with would be, well, this G sharp could move up to the, the B. So we have the D, the E, and the B. Next voicing we can come up with would be E, I'm oh sorry, D, G sharp, and B. After that, the E triad, E, G sharp, and B. Now we would have E, G sharp, and the D on top. Next voice we come up with is the B is the next closest note we can grab without doubling anything. So we have E, B, D. Next one would be kind of a cool stretch. G sharp, B, and D. Back to the E triad. And we're back to the beginning again. So real slowly, what's going on again? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry about the mistake. All right, now you're going to ask, well, what do I do with all that? Those are great voicings for E7. So say if I'm just going to... Uh... So those are all E7s, except for that one little weird thing I hit in the middle there. Um, here's the idea of the turnaround. In any of these voicings, if I have an actual E in the voicing, I want to keep that pitch the same and move all the other notes down chromatically until I reach my, late, my closest E triad. So what I mean is, so if I take this voicing, and that first turnaround I showed you, Well, this is one of our E7 voicings. Here we have the, the B, the D, and the E. So the E is in the voicing. So what I'm going to do is move all the other notes down chromatically. Mm -hmm. 
If the E is not in the voicing, like this particular one, I'm going to move everything down chromatically until I reach my closest triad. So the concept, once again, in the voicing, if the E is in it, the root is in it, everything moves down chromatically and that root stays the same. If it's not in the voicing, if the root is not in the voicing, we move everything down chromatically until we come down to our closest triad. So for instance, this E moves down chromatically. Here I have an E triad. My E stays the same, and each of the notes move down chromatically. So I've got to think about a good fingering for it. Can't really quite do that. So pretty cool, right? So this next voicing we came up with, well, this has got an E right in the middle. So this is definitely takes a little bit of thought on how you're going to finger this. This note, that the G sharp and the D, you have to move down chromatically. Pretty cool, so. Next voicing we have here, well there's my E. Okay, now the next one we would have, there's no E in this voicing. Okay, next voicing we have the E in it, everything else moves down chromatically. Okay, here we have E again, right there. Voicing E. No E in this voicing. And once again, back to the top, there is an E right here. I like that one a lot. And it all starts over again. The amazing thing is you take any three notes, uh, say the next string, E7, you have it all over the fingerboard, right? So if I take a wider voicing, so if I want to do um, B, G sharp, and E, now let's say the D. So it's some really cool voicings all around the fingerboard that you may not be used to. Now, of course, you can just use these as chord ideas. So, if I'm saying taking like a. Right? So, that's pretty cool. But I can play that as a lead line, too, right? Taking the same idea. I might not have done the whole. I just went, right, so I'm taking that same idea, keeping the, the root the same, and moving the other notes chromatically down. So to me, this is really great, really useful, opened up a ton of things on the fingerboard, helped me to get turnarounds all around. Now, one key thing is, I just de did these as descending turnarounds. Watch. all of these ascending as well. So that might take some thinking, of course. So this one, I wanted to go up to this, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Gotta think about that one. There it goes. Right, so I can do them ascending as well, as well as descending. So you've got a ton of licks, ton of turnarounds right there just from thinking about this one idea. Of course, you take it to different keys. Now, it gets easier, of course, because once you've done it in one key, I would say maybe if you're a blues player, do it in A next. 
and maybe G, the, you know, the guitar or the blues keys. And the more you do them, the more you see how these triads, or these three note voicings of the seventh chord, inversions, what I really want to try to say, uh, are all over the fingerboard, and you can see how they're going to resolve by keeping, once again, if the root is in the chord voicing, everything moves down chromatically except for that note. If the root is not in the chord voicing, everything moves down chromatically until you get to the closest triad. Okay, so that is the turnaround factory. You've got the PDF there to follow along with, so you've got it all written out on the top three, three strings. I think it's best that you take the ball and run with it, try to figure it out on the other strings. That way it really sinks in. So I've given it to you on the top three strings like I demonstrated. You want to try to do it through all the strings. Come up with your own string sets, maybe on a low string, middle string, and a high string, something like that. Um, okay, cool. I'm Jeff Mackerlane for Tighten Up Your Blues here at Truefire.